Hello, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for stopping by. And if you are a recurring viewer, thank you so much for uh, coming by again as well. I really appreciate you all being here. Um, this video today is going to be pretty short. I just wanted to do a bit of a reading update slash recent reads type video just to show a couple of the books that I have recently completed and the two that I am currently reading. Um, so to start with what I have recently finished, the first is a book by Joseph J. Ellis called First Family about uh, John and Abigail Adams. This is a bit of a joint biogra biography of John and Abigail as well as a sort of a brief uh, political history, a brief um, account of the Revolutionary War period in early American history. Um, and essentially, Joseph J. Ellis's approach and angle in this book is giving a look into how the Revolutionary War period affected the relationship and the marriage of John and Abigail Adams, one of the most popular um, sort of power couples in early American history. They were incredibly prolific in letter writing, exchanging more than 1,200 letters over the course of their time apart, which um, you know, obviously gives historians an incredible um, breadth of material to use when writing books about, uh, you know, about the Adams and about the early um, Revolutionary War period in American history. Uh, so this was absolutely a great read. It took me a lot longer than I thought it would take me. I ended up spending about a week with this book, even though it's only um, 260 pages, but I, I really wanted to slow down and enjoy the actual experience of the reading. There are a lot of the full letters uh, included here, which is wonderful to be able to read the, you know, the source material itself. I love when historians and authors include the subjects letters in their entirety. I feel that it gives a really wonderful connection to the subjects of the book. Instead of just reading about the letters, being able to actually read the letters themselves, I feel is another level of sort of authenticity uh, that lends itself really well to, you know, feeling connected to the narrative. So this was a, this was a really, really great read. I'm glad that um, I sort of slowed down with this one. Also, this is one that I meant to include in my January uh, nonfiction book haul. For some reason, I forgot to include this one, but this goes with that uh, main book purchase that I made at the beginning of the month. Um, I just forgot to show this, but this is another recent um, addition to my library. The, the second book that I recently finished is Nathaniel Philbrick's In the Heart of the Sea, uh, The Tragedy of the Whale Ship Essex. So I finished this one just a couple days ago, and this is my uh, first uh, sort of delve into reading anything about the, the 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 whaling industry. I have not read anything um, covering this topic before, and so this was a really illuminating and interesting read. Essentially, the tragedy of the whale ship Essex is what inspired Herman Melville to write Moby Dick. It was one of the first sort of most popularized um, tragic whaling accidents to happen. Uh, it, it took place in 1820. The Essex is a whale ship from the island of Nantucket, 30 miles off the coast of Massachusetts. It was a 20-man crewed whale ship that was attacked and sunk by an 84-foot sperm whale. Uh, then the crew of 20 spent 90 days uh, basically on the open Pacific Ocean suffering from severe dehydration, starvation, obviously you know sun exposure and things like that. Um, the crew resorted to cannibalism, eating the bodies of their dead crewmates, and then when that didn't prove enough, um, you know, drawing lots to to decide who would be killed in order to keep the other crew members alive. So some absolutely horrifying and grisly um, experiences and, and retellings in this book. I'm going to be doing a full review of this uh, that will be coming out on Thursday. So I'm not going to talk too much more. I just wanted to give enough to hopefully wet your whistles to watch the full uh, review on Thursday, but an absolutely harrowing tale. 
Um, and like I said, I haven't read anything about whaling before. I haven't read anything about sort of the um, maritime life, really nothing about Nantucket, um, m more than just sort of in passing when reading other, you know, other histories of, of New England or things like that. Uh, and so it was a really illuminating read, learned a whole lot. Um, so a full review of this will be coming out on Thursday for those of you who are interested. Then uh, I am currently reading George, Nicholas, and Wilhelm, Three Royal Cousins and the Road to World War I by Miranda Carter. Uh, and this is one that I did show in my uh, most recent book haul. And I'm sorry about the glare. It's kind of catching off of the... Uh, off of the, the Mylar cover there. But this is a, a, a three-part biography of George V, uh, Kaiser Wilhelm, and Nicholas II, as well as sort of a military and political history of, of World War I. Uh, so far, I am on uh, chapter three, which is Nicholas II's chapter. Um, as far as I can tell, each chapter is dedicated to one of the three uh, rulers here, um, you know, of the title and then sort of their stories being being weaved together so it gives a bit of a bit of a, a solo biography of each of the rulers as then it intertwines their stories which i think is a really interesting format um and of these three rulers i have only read about nicholas ii and george v in detail i have not read anything um solely about kaiser wilhelm so i'm really interested in this hoping that it's going to give me a little bit more of a, a, an understanding of Wilhelm, of Prussia, of its influence in Europe, and of his influence with Nicholas II and George V. And so far, it's been really fantastic. I'm only about 50 pages in, so I haven't gotten a, you know, a full taste of the book yet, but Miranda Carter's writing style is very approachable, very accessible. I haven't read anything by her until now, uh, but I'm certainly going to check out some of her other books just because I do really enjoy her writing style. It's very easy to read, which is really nice. Uh, then the other book that I am currently reading is Dangerous Liaisons. I'm going to try to pull it up here on my Kindle. It was not showing the cover earlier, and it's not doing it again. Uh, but Dangerous Liaisons by Pierre de Leclos. And this is the first book of a year-long reading event that I am hosting alongside Anne Novella called Classics and Company, where we are taking eight works of classic literature, stretching them over the course of 2023, um, and we'll be hosting uh, live stream discussions at the end of every book, along with a special BookTube co-host. And I will leave a link in the description below to the Discord server that we have for Classics and Company, if you would like to join us. Uh, you don't have to join us for the whole thing. You can go to the Discord server and you can see our uh, schedule of books to see if there's anything there that interests you that you want to join us for. Um, Dangerous Liaisons has about two weeks left on it, so there is technically still time to join uh, for this first book if you're interested. And again, that link will be down in the description below. Uh, so that is it for today. Just a really quick reading update. Just wanted to show a couple of the books that I have finished and what I'm currently working on. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you would like to leave a comment down below, please feel free to do so, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now, and happy reading.